learners. The topic for today's discussion is the novel Crime and Punishment written by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This novel published in 1866 is actually a translation from Russian. Despite being a translation however, this novel enjoys immense popularity not just in Russia, but all over the world. One reason for this popularity might be the universal theme of the novel, that is the study of the mind of a criminal, his guilt, his despair, his delirium, all these come through in the novel. Before looking at the novel in detail, however, let us look at the life of the novelist, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky was born in 1821. His novels are known for their commentary on social and political issues. This commentary comes through mostly in the conversations between his characters. His novels also express the philosophy of existentialism, a philosophy that became crystallized only a century later. Dostoevsky's famous novels, apart from Crime and Punishment, are Poor Folk, The Gambler, The Idiot and The Brothers Karamazov. At the time of writing Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky suffered under severe strain of poverty. He could hardly make ends meet. The publication of the novel, however, provided him with financial stability. There is a real life inspiration behind the novel and that is the French criminal, the most notorious French criminal of the 19th century, Pierre Francois Lassiner. This criminal was arrested on charges of a double murder and he thought so much of himself that he wrote his memoirs while in prison and his memoirs along with his collection of poems was published posthumously and this became immensely popular. Now, the method of murder that Lassiner used was incorporated by Dostoevsky while showing Raskolnikov's murders. The story of crime and punishment revolves around Raskolnikov whose full name is Roman Romanovich Raskolnikov, who is a student in St. Petersburg. He is a very poor student, poor not in the sense of being academically poor, but he lives in poverty. He thinks he is superior to society. This is partly because of the intellectual ideas that he imbibes, the new intellectual ideas. And because he thinks he is superior to society, he thinks he can get away with any crime, including that of murder. And to plan, he goes to the house of Alyona Ivanovna, a pawnbroker, whom he selects as his victim. He goes there and pawns his watch and then looks at the house to plan his murder. Raskolnikov also notices the presence of Lizaveta who is the pawnbroker's sister. On the way back, at a tavern, he meets Marmeladov, who is a former government official and now a drunkard. Marmeladov tells Raskolnikov how his family suffers due to his drunkenness and especially his daughter Sonia, who is forced to go into prostitution due to his frittering ways. Raskolnikov overhears at a tavern a student remarking that the miserly pawnbroker Alyona Ivanovna were better off dead than alive. He also overhears another remark that Alyona Ivanovna would not be in her house now but she would be alone in her house in the evening the next day. Now these two ideas make Raskolnikov thinks that it is in his destiny to murder Alyona Ivanovna. This is because he thinks that she is not just a scourge of society, but also that it was his destiny that he knew about 
her being alone in her house the next day. The next day dawns and Raskolnikov goes to Alyona's house with a fake item to pawn. While Alyona Ivanovna's back is turned, Raskolnikov strikes her with an axe. She is instantly killed of course. While searching for money in the bedroom, Raskolnikov encounters Lizaveta, who as you already seen is Alyona Ivanovna's sister. So he promptly murders her too. This is the first section of the novel. In the second section, Raskolnikov wakes up feeling paranoid that his clothes have traces of blood, which indeed isn't really true. So he buries the money under a rock. He goes to meet his Razumikin, who offers him a job because Raskolnikov is out of a job. But Raskolnikov's pride makes him refuse this job because he thinks Razumikin is doing him an act of charity. He meets the future fiancé of his sister Dunya, who is called Luzin, and he quarrels with him. Raskolnikov falls ill and after he wakes up, it, it has already been four days by then, he finds out that Zosimov, a doctor, and Zamyatov, a young police detective, have been visiting him. After an impulsive visit to the pawnbroker's house, he is on his way back home when he sees the drunkard Marmeladov being run over by a carriage. He takes back the body of Marmeladov to his family and gives some money to, to the family. Raskolnikov meets Razumikin, where Razumikin tells him that he is suspected of the murder. They go to Raskolnikov's house, where his mother and sister have arrived and they are scared looking at his condition. Razumikin starts loving Dunya, who is the sister of Raskolnikov. Meanwhile, Raskolnikov does not want his sister Dunya to marry Luzin, the government official, because Luzin has promised that he would help Raskolnikov. So again, Raskolnikov feels that Luzin is doing him some kind of charity. So as he does not want any charity, he is against the marriage. Meanwhile, Razumikin also helps the family financially. In the fourth section, Sonia arrives and invites Raskolnikov to her father's memorial dinner. Under a pretext, Raskolnikov visits Porfiry Petrovic, who is a magistrate, and he has a very confused and disjointed conversation about the murders. In the fifth section, the readers are introduced to another character called Svidrigailov. Svidrigailov is a former employer of Dunya and he has designs on her. He again tries to propose to her but Dunya fends him off. She says she neither wants his money nor his offer of marriage. Luzin and Raskolnikov's mutual dislike come to the fore when they meet at a family dinner and both of them quarrel again and Luzin ends up insulting everyone in the family. So Dunya breaks off the engagement and everyone is relieved because Luzin is a very obnoxious character. However, in the conversation that ensues, Razumikin now guesses that Raskolnikov is the murderer. It's an intuitive sense of course. But that's what Razumikin feels. Raskolnikov goes to meet Sonia, where he learns that Lizaveta, one of his victims, was indeed Sonia's friend. This makes him feel very guilty. He makes Sonia read to him the book of Lazarus, where Christ's resurrection is explained. And due to this whole book of Lazarus, Raskolnikov goes to the police station and almost confesses to the murders, 
before Nikolai, another accused, somehow confesses to the murder. The memorial dinner for Marmeladov goes off very poorly because Luzin is angry at Dunya for breaking off the engagement. He tries to implicate Sonia of stealing. However, he is found out. Raskolnikov then confesses to Sonia that indeed he had murdered Alyona Ivanovna and her sister Lizaveta, but this was an act to prove himself. In the next section, Sonia's mother goes mad and she parades her children in the streets to beg for money. The magistrate Porfiry Petrovic says that he figured out that Raskolnikov himself was a murderer and he urges Raskolnikov to confess as soon as possible as it would mean a lighter sentence. Meanwhile, Svidrigailov tries to rape Dunya, but Dunya fends him off with a gun. Dunya defends herself with a gun and with, with grief and with regret, Svidrigailov finally commits suicide. Finally, Raskolnikov decides to confess to the murders because his guilt is getting to him. Then he goes to his family and, and assures them of his love. He also goes to Sonia again, who gives him a cross, which makes his mind feel better. Then he goes and confesses to the murder. The last part is the epilogue, which is a trial of Raskolnikov. All his friends testified to the fact that Raskolnikov was essentially a good person who didn't even use the money that he had stolen from Alyona Ivanovna's house. Finally, Raskolnikov is sentenced to eight years of hard labor in Siberia. And Sonia too decides to go along with him because now she is very attached to Raskolnikov. Uh, meanwhile, Razumikin and Dunya marry because they realize they love for each other. And even while in prison, Raskolnikov initially feels very proud of his deed. He thinks that he has been superior and has killed and all that. But finally one day, he realizes his love for Sonia. And that is the event that makes him realize that he had sinned. And he realizes not just his love for Sonia, but also the presence of a higher force, that is God. So he is finally redeemed and he gets back to normal and thereby we are hopeful that Raskolnikov can become normal by the end of his 8 year sentence. The title of the novel is very interesting, Crime and Punishment. We have to notice that the crime takes place in the first section and the punishment that is imprisonment happens only in the epilogue. So Dostoevsky seems to suggest that the real punishment is a guilt experienced by Raskolnikov. Due to this guilt, he becomes isolated, he becomes alienated from the rest of society and it is only when he confesses to the murders that there is a hope that he can get back to society. We will however speak about crime and punishment, these themes, in detail a little later. The novel is divided into a proper beginning, middle and end. The novel is divided into six parts and an epilogue. The symmetry of the novel suggests a kind of duality. In fact, critics such as Edward Basiolek have suggested that the structure of the novel is like a flattened X. That is, the first three parts of the novel show the proud and rational Raskolnikov, while the last three parts show a humble and irrational Raskolnikov. So, thus we see the two symmetrical parts of the novel. The epilogue itself actually has generated a lot of controversy. Because some critics are of the opinion that because of the epilogue, the overall tragic effect of the novel is diluted. But some other critics are of the opinion but that Christian resurrection 
is a very important theme in the novel. So having the epilogue and showing the power of Christian resurrection helps. Therefore, the epilogue is an integral part of the novel. The novel Crime and Punishment is written in the third person narrative. However, Dostoevsky infuses the consciousness of this narrator with that of the protagonist very closely. That is, we have sections from his dream, section from his memories infused into the narrative. And, but, and this was a very new technique for the 19th century readers. So this led to some critics label Dostoevsky as a very disorganized writer. Dostoevsky has used different speech patterns for different people to show the inner workings of their mind. For instance, Luzin, the government official, speaks in an official language that indicates his pompousness and his superficiality. Uh, whereas Sonia's mother, Katerina Ivanovna, speaks in a very disorganized way that is indicative of her, uh, of her insanity. I mean, she later turns mad, so all of it is a sign of her disorganized mind. The protagonist, as we all know, is Raskolnikov. He is a person who thinks he is superior to society and can get away with any kind of crime, including murder. He thinks that other people in society are fit only to propagate society and not to commit any grave deeds. However, this notion of his is proved false by his recurring feelings of guilt and despair. So he is a person who is very easily swayed by the intellectual ideas of the time. And the failure of such ideas is shown through the character of Raskolnikov. And also Dostoevsky's belief that religious redemption and love of fellow beings is the only way to a proper and fulfilling life is shown through Raskolnikov. The next important character is Sonia. Sonia, who is the daughter of Marmeladov, the drunken official, is a timid girl. However, she has lots of sense. When she sees that her father, Marmeladov, gets no money to the family and there are so many children in the family, she resorts to prostitution to make ends meet. Indeed, she is not repulsed by Raskolnikov at all. She cares for him immensely and wants to help him to overcome his mental agony and so she urges him to confess and she even gives him a cross which shows that she wants to help him. Very surprising is the fact that she even goes along with him to Siberia where he goes to jail. So we see what a compassionate character Sonia is. She actually embodies the two values that Dostoevsky thinks are primary. One, family values and the second, religious values. The next character is that of Dunya. Dunya, who is Raskolnikov's sister, is like him in, his, in the intelligence that she displays. But she is unlike him in the fact that she is very mature, unlike Raskolnikov, who as we see is very immature. So Dunya has enough sense to know that you know, her family needs money. So she agrees to marry Luzin. But she has a lot of self-respect too because she rejects Luzin when he insults her family. She is also resourceful because when Svidrigailo tries to rape her, she scares him by shooting. She uses a gun which is a very resourceful thing to do. Therefore, she is, can be called the true heroine of the novel and so her marriage to Razumikin at the end of the novel is truly fulfilling. Razumakin is the next character. He is a very intelligent character and he is actually the exact opposite of Raskolnikov. Although hailing from a poor background like Raskolnikov, he does not think of fantastic schemes or does not plan to murder to get money, but he plods his way through success. He even offers Raskolnikov a job, so he is even compassionate. 
and he loves Dunya but does not show it outwardly. He tries to help her family. Rahasumakin is also considered as a model character in the eyes of Dostoevsky because he marries the heroine of the novel, as we said, Dunya, by the end. Other characters have uh, immense significance in the novel uh, when it comes to moving the story forward and expressing the ideas of Dostoevsky. For instance, Marmeladov, the drunken government official, shows the effect of drunkenness on the family and on society. And uh, Porfiry Petrovic, the magistrate, and Zamyatov, the young police detective, both these people show the compassionate judiciary and compassionate police force. We will now look at how names are important in the novel. Fyodor Dostoevsky wanted his entire novel to be infused with symbolism. So even the names of the characters have symbolic importance. For instance, Raskolnikov, the protagonist. Raskolnikov, the name is derived from the Russian Raskol, which means to split up. Yes, indeed, Raskolnikov's personality is that of a divided personality. He loves his family and friends, but at the same time doesn't think of them while he commits the murder. In fact, the very act of murder brings out the divided personality in all its glory. This is because he commits the murder keeping in mind the theory of utilitarianism. So once the murder is committed keeping a theory in mind, uh, you know that means that the person is a cold calculating machine. However, this theory looks at how useful a person is to society. So this is a sentimental scale. So, uh, you know, uh, due to the murder, Raskolnikov seems like a humane and compassionate murderer, which seems like an oxymoron. So when this oxymoron defines Raskolnikov's personality, so that of a divided personality. Razumikin, this name again, is derived from the Russian Razum, that means intelligence. Razumikin is easily the most intelligent character in the novel. You know, although he loves Dunya, he doesn't try to impose upon her like Svitrigailov does. Neither does he try to uh, you know, feel all pompous like Luzin does. He goes about slowly helping her family and then winning her heart. And also unlike Raskolnikov, he doesn't think of you know, fantastic get-rich schemes, but he plods his way through success. And Dostoevsky seems to suggest that plodding one's way through success is a sign of intelligence. The young police detective is named Zamyatov. Zamyatov means in Russian, Zamitit, that is to notice. So Zamyatov is again the most perceptive character of the novel because he sniffs out Raskolnikov's uh, you know, culpability very early in the novel. The names of other characters too are infused with symbolic significance. For instance, Marmeladov means marmalade or jam as most of us know. So this name is significant because Marmeladov is forever in a jam, in a muddle or a mess as we may call it due to his drunken behavior. So this mess has a very negative effect on his family as well. Other characters such as Zamitit as we have already seen is also infused with symbolic meaning. Now we have already looked at the summary of the novel and the importance of names in the various characters in the novel and we have seen how this plot serves to reiterate Dostoevsky's argument about crime. In the next section, we will look at certain themes such as alienation, crime and punishment again and 
other political theories that Dostoevsky tries to criticize such as nihilism, utilitarianism and other ideas. Uh, we will also look at symbols that is certain recurring images in the novel and we will finally look at how crime and punishment is significant in the modern era. This is very important because this novel was written more than 150 years ago. So, we need to know why it is significant even today, why as learners of English literature and as uh, you know universal citizens, we need to study this novel and understand it. So, we will do all of this in the next lesson. Thank you.